So let's talk about object-oriented programming. So previously, before objects, our program was what we would call functional program. And that basically means that our program will execute the lines from the beginning to the end. And we will have one program and we may have some if statements or function that may change the order in which we execute the lines of our program. But object-oriented programming, it's an entirely different type of concept that enables us to create much more powerful programs. And with object-oriented programs, we can have many different programs that interact with each other to create one super program. So just to illustrate this and make this more clear, I'm going to use an example of a self-driving car. Okay. And we can break things down into specific components or specific objects. So the first would be a typical wheel, just like this. And with this wheel, the only thing it can do is either move forward or move back. And that is basically the methods or functions that this wheel can perform, either move forward or move back. But then we can have an entirely new object, but this time the object includes more different objects. So here we can call this entire object here the car body object, okay? And basically, we now have two wheel objects inside our car body object, and we also have a controller or a chassis object here. So we put all these objects together to create this object right here. And the power here is that now, instead of just being able to move a wheel forward and back, we now have the functionality to turn because we just move one wheel forward and one wheel back. And now we have a turning functionality. But we can still keep building on this object because this is supposed to be a self-driving car. So now we can add a sensor. Let's say this is a distance sensor, which should give us the amount of distance to some type of obstacle. This itself is an object which produces just numbers. And these numbers represent how far or close it is from an obstacle. So we can add this object to our current car body object. So now not only can our car go forward and back and turn left and right, but it can also detect obstacles and avoid them by just simply moving back and turning away from the obstacle. This is what makes object-oriented programming so powerful and beautiful. Each object can exist on its own, but when we combine these objects, they interact differently with different objects and, and we can basically build something massive and super complex, like a self-driving car. So now let me give you another real world example. For instance, an Amazon delivery drone. So in order to create these delivery drones, Amazon doesn't need to know exactly how each component works, okay? So we can just get some type of object that can fly. And that would be one component of its own. And then you will need a vision system something that will enable the object to detect obstacles and see where it's going. And then we'll need a navigation system, which will be able to provide some type of guidance for our object and determine the optimal routes to take in order to deliver the package as quickly as possible. And we can e keep adding different components to this if we want. But the whole point of this is that we can move things around to interact with different things. So let's say, if, for instance, in the future, now Amazon decides that they want to create self-driving cars. They can just use the same vision system that they use on their drones 
and add that vision system to their car. So hopefully by now you should have a good understanding of object-oriented programming and why it's so powerful.